Welcome back to our question of the day. Let's get started. We're going to start again with the answer choices hidden, and we always start with the last sentence or the question of the vignette before we read through so we know what this question is going to be asking us. What is the probable source of this child's condition? A 19-month-old child is brought to the emergency department after his parents found blood in his stool. They state that he has not had any acute distress, and although he now displays some tenderness to abdominal pressure, other than this tenderness, there are no significant findings on physical examination. After performing radionucleotide imaging using the Technician 99, the doctor makes a diagnosis and recommends surgery to correct the problem. What is the probable source of this child's condition? So I'm thinking through what I know that this is a blood and stool of a child. The Technician 99 kind of gave me a bit of a buzzword uh, that's used very often in one particular type of thing. But let's go ahead and look at our answer choices and see uh, what options we might have that, that might fit in with this particular situation. A. Blockage of the intestine due to folding of the distal ileum into the proximal colon. B. Breakdown of the stomach mucosal barrier with erosion of the underlying mucosa. C. Damage to the intestinal epithelium due to ingestion of coins. D. Ectopic gastric epithelium in a persistent umphalomesenteric duct. Or E. Incomplete bowel rotation resulting in obstruction of the superior mesenteric artery. Take a minute, come up with your answer, and write your answer in the comments below. All right, let's first start off uh, that last one, E, incomplete bowel rotation. So this is something that happens in fetal growth and fetal life. So if something presents with this, we're going to see this in the first few weeks of life. So at a 19-month-old, I'm not seeing a lot of reason why we would have any type of bowel rotation. Also, an occlusion of an artery is going to cause some severe pain, um, and this patient is showing uh, very little uh, significant findings on physical examination. So that automatically takes E out of the running. Let's go back up and start with A. Blockage of the intestine due to folding the distal ileum into the proximal colon. That's another way of saying uh, into susception. While we can get some blood in the stool into susception, I don't think that we're going to have no other symptoms. We usually have a lot of pain, and it can be pretty pretty bad along, alongside of vomiting, diarrhea, and that kind of thing. So intussusception uh, doesn't seem to fit this case. B, uh, breakdown of stomach mucosal barrier with erosion of underlying mucosa. You know, are we talking about a peptic ulcer maybe in this case? You know, I think that's what B describes. I don't think that's what we're seeing with just some blood in the stool with no other symptoms. A lot of times in peptic ulcers, I'm going to have, you know, some abdominal pain um, that, that that is really going to be quite significant, uh, and they're not really showing much of an issue. So I'm going to take B out of the running here. C, damage to the intestinal epithelium due to the ingestion of coins. While ingestion of foreign bodies is very, very common uh, with uh, infants and toddlers, as they like to put things in their mouth, um, that's going to be causing more of a mechanical damage to the intestinal lining and not just a, uh, a, a little bit of bowel in, or blood in the stool. Um, and we don't also use the Technician 99 scan for those type of things, trying to find uh, foreign objects in the abdomen. So to me, that's going to be uh, not a good answer. So that just leaves me with D, ectopic gastric epithelium and a persistent umphalomesenteric duct. That will be my answer. I believe that is a... Meckel's diverticulum, and that fits the vignette and my answer choice. So D is my answer. And D is the correct answer, is a Meckel's diverticulum. So this patient is presenting um, with the persistent umphalomesenteric duct, or the vitiline duct um, that comes just inside of the belly button. The mesical diverticulum, it's going to be typically found in the mid to the distal ileum, uh, and it can end blindly or it can connect to the umbilicus. And one thing to remember with our Meckel's diverticulum is the rule of twos. Now remember the rule of twos is 2% 2 of the population within two feet of the ileocecal valve. Uh, it's two inches in length. Two types of mucosa are involved, 
both gastric and pancreatic uh, mucosa, and it often presents before the age of two. So those are our rule of twos associated with our Meckel's diverticulum, which is the correct answer for this question. Thank you.